Um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank y'all all for coming out tonight. Um, we have uh, our guest artist here with us tonight, Mel Kataya. Um, we uh, appreciate her coming out uh, from Swainsboro um, uh, to talk about her artwork. And she's originally from uh, Miami, Florida. Um, and I'll let her talk a little bit about her journey from there to Swainsboro um, for you. And uh, she's here to uh, tell us about her work. And uh, she's presently going, I think, to East Georgia. Is that right? Uh, working on a uh, degree to support her art habit. So, <laughs> so without further ado, I'll introduce Mel Cartaya to you. Hi, guys. Thanks a lot for coming out. Um, so, I'm Mel, obviously. I'm so the first community to done that. Um, so, I've been making art for a long time. Um, and very recently, I have developed a compulsion to do things uh, over and over, um, <laughs> as you may have noticed. Um, but uh, my art deals a lot with uh, essentially just people and interconnectivity. Um, I like to explore relationships between people and a lot of it is me trying to make my own connections with uh, parts of my family that I don't personally have access to. So like some fantastic artists that I know. <laughs> There's one right there. Um, I, I tend to make up you know, those pieces and those bits that I, that I don't have access to. And um, some of the work, particularly the work on that wall, is about that. Um, those two clusters right there, specifically. Um, and a lot of it uh, also deals with uh, religion. And I grew up Catholic. And so, you know, you'll notice some Catholic accessories around, especially the altars. Um, and, you know, it's usually, for most people that grow up Catholic, it's a mixed bag. You know, there's the good, and it's not so good. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I really enjoy kind of juxtaposing, um, you know, conventional and unconventional religions. Um, a lot of Masonic symbols, uh, pagan things, um, and uh, Buddhist and Hindu as well. So you'll see a lot of that going on on the altars. Um, I love to deal with uh, symbols that are, well, sort of universal. Like, for example, the skull that I have. I have a skull on the altar, um, as well as a serpent and an apple. Um, those are things that are, <coughs> you know, symbolic obviously of, of several religious ideas, but for each person they also mean something slightly different, and I really like to set things up so that it, it can kind of transform while each person is interpreting it. Um, I like to do that, so yeah. Um, I don't know that it's more complicated than that, <laughs> but I'll answer any questions that anyone has. Um, will you talk about the hand? That I, I forgot the title of what those are, but oh, it sounds like a specific word. Maybe there's a specific Yes, word. these are actually homsas, and if you'll notice, they are, they're actually hands. Um, and each of them has an eye in the middle of the uh, palm. And that's actually a very, very old symbol. Um, it's, <laughs> it's one of my favorite symbols because it is adopted by both... Uh, the Jews and uh, Islam. I mean, it's it's a symbol that has been adopted by countries that even now are warring with each other and <coughs> fighting over things that really they agree on. <laughs> um, but I think it's such a beautiful a beautiful symbol, and it's kind of heartbreaking that that it's it's lost somehow in in translation that that really, you know, the, the sentiment and the belief is parallel and is there. So I, uh, I just, I made one, because I wanted one, and I couldn't find one. <laughs> and then it wasn't quite right, and then I made another. <laughs> and, um, and then I made like 60. <laughs> and, um, and well, that's not true, it wasn't quite like that. But after I made like five, I was like, you know, I kind of like making these, it's a nice little, meditative, you know, I can just kind of zone out and 
you know, cut a little hand shave, do a little, you know, drawing, and I, I just, I really, I really liked it, so I kind of just kept, you know, over and over, and over, so, you know, that thing that you keep doing. <laughs> so there's that. Um, Are the hands also one of the Masonic symbols? You were talking about integrated between religion and um, the Masons. The hands do pop up uh, in the Masonic symbols, but not necessarily with the eye. The eye is usually separate from the hands. They do, ooh, I'm really fond of what they do with the eye. Um, they, they put the eye in like a cloud, and then it like shoots rays of holy amazingness. It's really <laughs> quite cool. <laughs> Professor Agnew wanted me to um, talk about how I ended up in Swings Borough from Miami. Um, I grew up in Miami. I was born in Florida, and uh, I lived for most of my life there, actually for all of it, uh, until I moved to Swings I, you know, it's, it's a very lovely place to visit, and um, there's a lot going on, uh, but I just got really tired of, you know, hustle and the bustle and the broken car windows and the, you know, bugs. In Miami, so, in Miami yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I, I went to visit, um, I, came, I came to Swainsboro on a whim with my uncle that's like a hunter, and I just, I was like, well, this is completely different from anything that I've ever even seen in my life, because I'd never even been out to the country at that point, and so I came back two weeks later and I bought a little house. And um, I can be a little compulsive. But it usually works out for me pretty well. <laughs> so, yeah. And I've been here ever since with the exception of a year, a little year in San Francisco, which was marvelous. But I missed Swingsboro. <laughs> and yeah, so.